Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Professor Avinash Darich. I am the Dean of Institute of Legal Studies and Research, GLA University, Mathura. My dear students, today we are going to talk about very important financial institution and the regulator of banks, that is the RBI, Reserve Bank of India. And then we will talk about the Negotiable Instrument Act, 1881. So, NI Act. I believe you heard that it deals with the uh, check and the other instruments which we use for the financial transactions. So, let us start. So, let us understand the role of RBI, so Reserve Bank of India. So, the first role of RBI is issue of bank notes. The Reserve Bank of India has the sole right to issue currency notes except one rupee note which are issued by Ministry of Finance. Currency notes issued by the RBI are declared unlimited legal tender throughout the country. This concentration of notes issue function with the RBI has a number of advantages. It brings uniformity in note issue, it makes possible effect state supervision, it is easier to control and regulate credit in accordance with the requirement in the economy. And finally, it keeps faith of the public in the paper currency. Dear students, this is very important role of RBI because in any mature jurisdiction, until and unless we have faith in our currency, our economy cannot grow. So, recently we have seen few examples like right now, it is happening in Venezuela, currently it is happening in Turkey, that their value of their currency has devalued drastically and now people do not have faith in their currency anymore. So, I was saying that one of the role of RBI is to issue the bank notes and it is not only issuing, but even the regulating and controlling that how many notes are circulating in Indian market and how to control the over circulation of the bank notes. So, that is very important role of RBI, then it is a banker to the government, because government also needs a banker. I just give you maybe the brief uh, understanding, brief uh, historical background that how this concept of banker to government started. So, as you know that earlier like you know historically there was no banking system, banking system started few hundred years back maybe in 16th or 17th century, uh, it started in Paris. So, the idea was that earlier king used to issue uh, coins and there was no bank. Okay. But when the France and their government started uh, having some financial issues, they needed an institution which can finance the government. Okay. And how they can finance the government? If they can issue currency. So, the concept of this paper currency started in Paris, historically it started in China thousands years back, but in the modern time it started in Paris and they started issuing currency. Okay. So, once people start believing in currency not, then the government got the ultimate and unlimited power to issue more and more currency, because to have gold coins and silver coins, it was always an issue of the availability, but to issue uh, currency notes. So, I think that was the concept, the government should have a bank. As banker of the government, the RBI manages the banking needs of the government. It has to maintain and operate the government's deposit accounts. It collects receipts of funds and makes payment on behalf of the government. It represents the government of India as the member of IMF and World Bank. So, this is very important role of RBI. And then the uh, next one is custodian of cash reserve of commercial banks. 
So, the commercial bank hold deposits in the reserve bank and the latter has the custody of the cash reserve of the commercial bank. So, all, all the commercial banks in this country they are allowed to keep a only a limited amount of cash with them. Okay. So, that uh, all the cash of the all commercial banks are with the RBI and RBI manages this, their, their protection as well as their regulation. Custodian of uh, country's foreign currency reserve, that is very important. I, I believe you remember and maybe you have read that uh, during the 1991, when the currency reserve of India dropped only to cater one week of our foreign reserve requirement. When I say foreign uh, currency requirement is that we are exporting so many things, you know, we are exporting oil, we are exporting gold and we are exporting, uh, so not sorry, exporting, importing, we are importing so many things from abroad and that uh, payment is done through the, so until and unless RBI does not have enough dollar, that payment cannot proceed. So, RBI has to have enough uh, financial and currency reserve and when I say currency reserve mainly the uh, RBI and the international transactions happen in dollar, the US dollar and then there are some few transactions in pound and euro and some other currencies also, but mostly uh, foreign transactions take place in US dollar. So, uh, the RBI has to keep uh, required currency reserve to take care of the countries requirement. Okay. So, in 1991 we got this issue then I think we had to put our gold uh, in Swiss, Swiss uh, custody and we got some money. So, that was a very difficult time. So, now currently the India's foreign currency reserve is more than 600 billion. So, that is a good number and now uh, if in any crisis we can take care of it. Like for example, the reserve bank has the custody of country country's reserve of international currency and this enable the reserve bank to deal with the crisis connected with adverse balance of payment of position. Okay. Then lender to last resort, the commercial bank approach to RBI in terms of emergency to tide our financial difficulties and the reserve bank comes to their rescue though it might charge a higher rate of interest. So, you need to understand that this is RBI is not only the bank of the government, but RBI is the bank of the bank al banks also. Okay. So, if any bank uh, in this country required some funding or some cash, then they can approach to RBI, RBI can issue some uh, cash to them and RBI can charge some higher interest rate. Okay. So, you need to understand that RBI is the last resort for any lender in this country, uh, either it is a government or the banks. Then see I am just uh, explaining you the important roles of RBI, because sometime we believe that RBI does very small things, uh, but you need to understand after this lecture that RBI is doing multiple jobs for this country. And when you join a, a, a bank or any financial institution after your education, then you should understand RBI very well, because RBI plays an important role in banking regulation and financial regulation. Central clearance and account statement. Since commercial banks have their surplus cash reserve deposited in the reserve bank, it is easier to deal with each other and settle the claim of each on the other through bookkeeping entries in the books of the reserve bank. So, RBI does this job also that uh, 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 bank A, bank B, both of them they have their reserve with the RBI and if they are doing any transaction, they do not need to do uh, individually, the clearance will happen through the RBI. The clearing of accounts has now become an essential function of the reserve bank. This is very important. It, it gives certainty also. It gives clarity whether this transaction can take place or not. Because sometimes it happens that some banks they do not have enough reserve and still they are accepting more liabilities. But once RBI is the clearance agent, then nobody can do such type of fraud. So, you have seen in last few years that RBI intervened and they did not allow few banks to do more transactions. 
okay because considering their financial situation rbi decided that you don't have enough cash so we cannot allow you to continue okay then rbi can uh, intervene and uh, took over the entire operations of that particular bank then it plays the role of controller of credit since credit money uh, forms the most important part of the supply of money and since the supply of money has important implications for economic stability the importance of control of credit becomes obvious credit is controlled by reserve bank in accordance with the economic priorities of the government so guys you need to understand that government does have lot of priorities you know sometime they want to promote something sometime they want to uh, you know demotivates a few sectors few practices so the government's priorities uh, in terms of finance and money is controlled by the rbi so government cannot do direct things so they ask rbi to intervene in the market and act as per the requirement of the economy and desire of the government so let's see the legal framework of rbi how rbi uh, what type of rules regulations are governing the rbi so our reserve bank of india comes under the preview of the following acts the first one is reserve bank of india act 1934 you should know that rbi was established by britishers before our freedom then public debt act act 1944 government securities regulation 2007 banking regulation 1949 foreign exchange management act 1999 securities and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of security interest act 2002 credit information companies regulation act 2005 and payment and Set settlement system act 2007 why i am giving all these example because once you become a manager and as i said you are working in a com in a bank or a financial institution when you are dealing with so many commercial complex transactions you need to understand that all these laws are regulating your uh, market behavior your individual behavior your company's behavior so you need to know them i am not saying that you become expert but you should know okay these laws are there you need to talk to your legal manager your compliance manager and they can help you to understand that what is allowed what is not allowed as per the rbi rules and regulations so let's see the functions of rbi in indian banking system so first is monetary authority it decides how much money is needed to be supplied to the economy in order to stabilize the exchange rate maintaining good balance of payment and attain financial stability control inflation strengthening the core banking system this is very important this is the supreme authority in terms of monetary or a policy of the government of india you need to understand that rbi is very much autonomous though government appoints the rbi governor and some other officers but they have lot of autonomy okay so independently they can take a decision that how much money is required in this country okay if you supply too much currency currency will lose its value so sometime you think okay if we need more money why rbi is not issuing more and more money so the same thing happened in venezuela as i said in turkey or in so many other countries if you see last 40 50 years you know uh, money loses its very value very quickly if it is easily available okay then you start buying maybe one a uh, bread for 10000 rupees 20000 rupees so it's not about the value it's not about the number but the value is more important okay so here rbi controls exchange rate maintaining good balance of payment financial stability of the country inflation is a very important part uh, for the rbi that inflation rate should not increase to some particular point whenever the inflation rate is increasing in this country rbi intervenes and try to control the inflation rate and then finally the most important part is strengthening the back core banking system so you need to understand rbi is a bank regulator the main job is that the all banks private government or all other types of bank they should work in tandem they should work in a positive manner so that they are not harming people 
you need to understand that in past in India as well as abroad, so many banks have collapsed. Okay. So, when a bank collapsed, thousands and millions of people can lose their saving, life savings, they, a lot of people can lose their business. So, uh, strengthening the core banking system is the one of the important role of RBI. Then uh, the issuer of currency as we discussed earlier, it is a like it is a main organization it issues currency and the main purpose of this is to uh, control the circulation of fake currency. Okay. Because if there is a too much currency in market and there are no good standards then it is very difficult for people to understand what is the fake currency and what is the real currency. So, RBI controls this thing so that very uh, less number of fake currency is circulated in Indian economy. Then issuer of banking license this is very important as per the section 22 of the banking regulation act a bank cannot start functioning without obtaining license from the reserve bank of India. This is one of the very important role as I said the strengthening the core banking system. It is not that easy to start a bank in India. If you compare some countries where banks are easily openable, then you see lot of collapse, lot of corruption, lot of fraud and millions of people lose their job and life and money. In India to get a license, they have to go to the RBI and RBI decides that who can get the license. Even they check conflict of interest also like recently there was an idea that why corporates the big corporates can have their own bank you know like the Reliance, Adani, Tata, Ambani's you know all the big, uh, big empires like TCS, Infosys they are too big why they cannot open a bank you know. But then RBI said no we cannot allow these corporates to open the bank because there is a conflict of interest you know they are doing business. So, their main priority will be do a business you know uh, to use the bank for their own commercial and business objectives. So, that is why RBI said no sorry we cannot issue license to you. Banker and debt manage, manager of government RBI keeps deposit of government without charging any interest receive and make the payment carry exchange remittance and help to float new loans and manage public debt it also act as an advisor to government. So, this is the uh, banker to the government. Money supply and controller of uh, credit to control demand and supply of money in economy by open market operations credit se selling RBI has to match the credit requirement of the rest of the banking system. So, it makes a balance between all the banks like you know as I said all the banks should work in a very in a very balanced approach you know the RBI cannot allow all the banks to work so independently that ultimately it goes to a chaos situation. It needs to maintain price stability and high rate of economic growth. Bankers bank we have done it act as a clearing house yes we have done it. Then manager of foreign exchange this is very important it acts as a custodian of forex. It administers and enforces the provision of Foreign Exchange Management Act FEMA 1999. RBI buys and sells foreign currency to maintain the exchange rate of Indian rupees versus foreign currencies. You need to understand that the foreign currency exchange rate is very important for any economy. Like for example, if our currency is so devalued like for example, for 1 dollar if our currency rate is 400 rupees then it will be impossible for our uh, business people to export their product in outside of market because then there is no value of their money. Okay. So, in that scenario they have to manage and one thing more these foreign currency exchange rate is not decided by RBI it is decided by London stock exchange, New York stock exchange and there are external agencies uh, which is controlling this exchange rate. Okay, so, RBI just plays an important and smart role that how to control the circulation of money in India and outside of India. So, that Indian uh, currency Indian rupees uh, does not devalue too much okay. and second is foreign exchange management act. No dollar can come and go outside of India without the approval of the RBI. So, if any dollar is coming in India 
RBI approval is required if any dollar is going outside of India RBI approval is required. So, it, it regulates the foreign exchange. Okay. So, that is very important role. Then regulator of economy, it controls the money supply in the system, monitor different key indicators like GDP, inflation and all this fiscal policy, financial policies, banking policies. So, it regulates the entire economy. Okay. Managing government securities, RBI administers investment in institutions when they invest specific minimum proportion of their total assets liability in government securities. Regulator and supervisor of payment and settlement system. This is very important PPS, a payment and settlement system. The payment and settlement system act 2007 gives RBI oversight authority of the payment and settlement system in the country. RBI focuses on the development and functioning of the safe, secure and efficient payment and settlement mechanism in our country. Then that is another important role, publisher of monetary data and other data. How we will come to know what is the financial situation of this country? Someone has to issue authentic data. So, RBI maintains and provide all essential banking and other economic data formulating and crit critically evaluating the economic policies in India, RBI collects, uh, co collates and publish data regularly. This is very important. If we want to know like suppose you want to know where the economy is going, how this banking sector is evolving or any other thing which is connecting with money. If you want to know the policy formation, you should read the RBI publishing data. Exchange manager and controller RBI represent India as a member of the International Monetary Fund. Most commercial banks are authorized dealer of RBI. So, RBI even represents India at the international forums like the IMF, World Bank and other uh, financial institutions. So, in, uh, so, RBI is the official representative of government of India. Banking courts and board of India the, to measure the performance of banks against courts and standards based on established global practices, RBI set up the banking courts and stand, standard board of India. Okay. So, this is another role of RBI. Fair practice code for lenders, RBI formulated the fair practices code for lenders which are communicated to banks to safeguard the interest of the borrowers. Okay. Like banks cannot exploit a borrower. Okay. So, RBI issued a clear guidelines that what could be the rules and regulations in terms of dealing with the borrowers. All the banks are supposed to follow the codes formulated by RBI. So, it is not about the banks even we need to protect the interest of borrowers. Okay. Miscellaneous functions the RBI collects corrects and uh, publishes all monetary and banking data regularly in weekly statement in the RBI bulletin and in the report of currency and finance. Provision of industrial finance, a rapid industrial growth is the key of the development of economy. Providing advocate uh, and timely credit to small, medium and large industries very important. RBI has played a pivotal role in setting up special financial institutions such as IDBI bank, ICCI bank and Exim bank. So, all these special banks were uh, established by RBI to take care of the industrial finance. See there are uh, two types of finance, individual finance and industrial finance. Individual finance and uh, as the industrial finance can also be taken care by normal bank. But then RBI thought that we need to establish special banks like for example, Exim Bank is dealing with only exporters. If exporters they need some type of uh, special finance, they can approach to this particular bank. So, this bank is only for exporters, it is not for common people. In current scenario, the role of RBI in Indian economy has changed according to the scenario in the country. So, as per the requirement of country. The RBI is keep changing its monetary policy like for example, in April 2029, they changed the borrowing rate to 6 percent. This was the second rate cut for 2019 and as continued because in 2019 after the demonetization country had so many issues and is expected to have a positive impact on the borrowing rates across the credit market more substantially. 
prior to april credit rates in the country have remained relatively high despite the central bank's positioning which has been limiting borrowing across the economy the central bank must also grapple with the slightly volatile inf inflation rate that is projected at 2.5 in 2009 2.9 to 3 percent in the first half 20 so you can see in the last years they even projected and they changed their policies as per the requirement of the country supervisory functions of rbi providing license to banks and keeping a control on the number of few uh, new branches so if they want to start a new branch they need to take approval from the rbi doing inspections of the bank so rbi also inspects all the banks the uh, rbi checks whether all the banks are following rules and regulations of rbi or not controlling non bank financial institutions the non bank financial institutions are not influenced by the working of a monetary policy rbi has a right to issue directives to the nbfis regarding their functioning so non bank financial institutions they are they are not banks but they are involved in financial transactions okay there are many private as well as the government so they are not uh, coming under the preview of the banking law however rbi has full right to issue directives that what to do what not to do even to those institutions implementation of the deposit insurance scheme in order to protect the deposit of small <coughs> depositors rbi work to implement the deposit insurance scheme in case of bank failure so earlier it was like 1 lakh but now recently the government has changed and now it's a 5 lakh rupees so if in case if any bank fails then the uh, all the person who have saved their money and put that money minimum they will get 5 lakh rupees okay if it is above 5 lakh rupees they will lose the money uh, i think we have seen last last 2 to 3 years that many banks failed people were uh, very much in panic because they lost their entire life saving you know in this scenario rbi intervenes and ensures that minimum 5 lakh rupees must be given to all borrowers uh, i'm not saying that all guys will get 5 lakh rupees up to 5 lakh rupees okay so if you have 6 lakh rupees in bank and the bank fails you will get 5 lakh rupees if you get 4 then only 4 okay so this this is basically to protect the small uh, borrowers and investors and then prohibitory functions of rbi it cannot provide any direct finance assistance to any industry trade or business so rbi cannot work as a bank it's a bankers of the bank it's a bankers to the government this is the supreme bank but however rbi cannot finance anyone directly it cannot purchase its own share okay it cannot purchase share of any commercial and industrial undertaking it cannot purchase an immovable property it cannot give loans to on the security of shares and property why all these restrictions are there so that we can manage the conflict of interest situation because we don't want that rbi should involve in any types of business because once rbi starts doing business then it will be very difficult for rbi to regulate the other banks okay so we want to keep rbi as a regulator not as a commercial uh, vehicle to do business okay so rbi uh, journal terms and conditions monetary policy this policy refers to the use of regulatory tools under the control of the rbi in order to regulate the availability cost and use of money and credit so this monetary policy defines so many things and normally monetary policy is very much independent by the rbi however the government can give some indications to rbi that what they want in the economy then cash reserve ratio crr banks are required to hold a certain amount their deposit in form of cash with rbi rbi uses uh, crr either to drain excess liquidity from the economy or to release additional funds needed for the growth of the economy so as i said the banks need to put some money in the rbi as a cash so rbi can change the uh, crr uh, ratio as per the requirement of the industry statutory liquidity ratio as slr is the amount that commercial banks are required to maintain in form of gold 
or government approved securities before providing creditors to customer. So, this CRR and SLR is basically to maintain the uh, financial health of a uh, bank because if banks are not having enough cash or enough resources or enough credits then they should not continue with their business because if they do not have money then this is not good for anyone. And then fiscal policy. So, fiscal policy is it is related to direct taxes and government spending. When direct taxes increases and spending of government increases then the disposal income of the people reduces and hence the demand reduces. So, this fiscal policy and monetary policy they are the most important tool for the government through the RBI to regulate the economy. Like for example, in fiscal policy if we increase the taxes okay, then people have less money to spend. If they have less money to spend then demand will also decrease. If demand decreases then economy growth also decreases. So, all these things are linked and RBI has to take a right call whether what should be the monetary policy, what should be the fiscal policy as per the requirement of the country. Repo rate, the rate at which RBI loans out money to commercial bank is called repo rate. Whenever banks face a limitation of funds, they can borrow money from the RBI against securities. Okay? If the RBI increases the repo rate, borrowing becomes quite expensive for banks and vice versa. Okay, so, repo rate is very important to regulate the economy. As a tool to control inflation, RBI increases the repo rate, making it more expensive for the banks to borrow from the RBI with a view to restricting the availability of money. Similarly, the RBI will do the exact opposite in a deflammatory uh, environment. If the suppose the, uh, the, the you know inflation rate is increasing too high, then how to control inflation rate? to make the borrowing more expensive. So, people uh, borrow less and then uh, automatically inflation rate will come down. Reserve repo rate, the rate at which RBA is willing to borrow from the commercial bank is called reverse repo rate. If the RBA increases the reverse repo rate, it means the RBA is willing to offer good interest rate to banks to deposit their money with the RBI. When RBI asks them to deposit their money, RBI pays them interest. This result in the decrease in the amount of money available for banks, customers as bank prefer to deposit their money with the RBI as guaranteed higher security. This is naturally leads to a higher rate of interest with the banks will demand from their customers from lending money to them. So, this is how you know like the playing with the repo rate and reverse repo rate, the RBI can influence the economy. Okay, as per the requirement of our country. Now, we will move to the Negotiable Instrument Act 1881. The main object of Negotiable Instrument Act is to legalize the system by which instruments contemplated by could pass from hand to hand by negotiation like any other goods. So, you need to understand that as I, as I said it is a 1881, it means that this law was enacted by Britishers more than 140 years. So, during that time people had more trust in cash or gold okay, or in property. To have it to create a mechanism where people can rely on documents like when I give you a check or I give you a hundi you know. So, if you can trust that particular document then it is easier for financial institutions to run like suppose if I give you a check and then a check of suppose like 5 lakh rupees and then you go and go to the bank deposit the check and money comes to your account. So, in this sense no real financial transaction no cash hard money got moved from place to place you know and it is easier to move money with this type of ecosystem rather than putting money in real life. The purpose of this act was to present an orderly and authoritative statement of leading rules of law relating to the negotiable instruments. To achieve the objective of the act, legislature thought it proper to make provisions in the act for confirming certain privileges to the mercantile instruments contemplated under it and provide special procedures in case the obligation under the instruments was not discharged. Okay. 
So when you are putting some rules, regulations that these type of documents like the check for example should be respected. So if someone is not respecting that check, there has to be some provisions which can put that person uh, in jail or some compensation. Okay? So they have made these provisions. So first understand all these instruments, okay, negotiable instruments. First is promise, a, a promissory note. A promissory note is an instrument in writing, not being a bank note or a currency note containing an unconditional undertaking signed by the maker to pay a certain sum of money only to or to, to the order of a certain person or to the better of the instruments. You understand the bearer of the instrument. So, if I give a promissory note that I will give you 10 lakh rupees after 6 months. Okay? So, that note has legal value now. Kinds of promissory note, section 4 of this act recognizes 3 kinds of promissory note. A promise to pay a certain sum of money to a certain person, a promise to pay a certain sum of money to the order of a certain person or a promise to pay the bearer. Who, whosoever keeps that note will get the money. So, these are the three types of promissory notes you can find and recognized under the Indian law. Then bill of exchange. A bill of exchange is an instrument in writing containing an unconditional order signed by the maker directing a certain person to pay a certain sum of money only to or the order of a certain person or to the bearer of the instruments. So, these are the following bills of exchange, a banker's draft, so like when you go and make a draft, then this is the order, you know, like you are giving an order to the bank that please give me draft and that draft is considered just like a currency. A demand draft even is drawn upon another office of the same bank, an order issued by the district board engineer or government treasurer, treasury for payment or to order for a certain person. So, these type of bills of exchange can be issued by banks as well as the government. Check, this is the most common instrument we use in our day to day life. A check is a bill of exchange drawn on a specified banker and not expressed to the payable otherwise than on demand and it includes the electronic image of a taunted check and a check in the electronic forum. So, let us understand what is check. For the purpose of this section, the expression a check in the electronic form means a check which contains the exact mirror image of a paper check is generated, written and signed in a secure system ensuring the minimum safety standards with the use of digital signature with or without biometric signature. So, check can be physical and check can be digital also. And second type of check is a check is a truncated check during the course of clearing circle either by the clearing house or by the bank whether paying or receiving payment immediately on generation of an electronic image for transmission substituting the further physical movement of the check in writing. And if you move more then for the purpose of this section the clearing house, what is clearing house means the clearing house managed by the RBI or the clearing house recognized by the RBI. A check being a bill of exchange must process purchase all the assessment of a bill and should also meet the requirement of section 6. For instance, in the case of Cole versus Milson 1951, a document was drawn absolutely in form of check, it was made payable to cash or order. The question was whether it was a valid check, section 5 of the Indian Act and section 3 1 of the English Act requires that a bill of exchange must be made payable to or to the order of a specified person or the bearer. The document was made, pay, made payable to cash or order, hence it was not payable to any person or the bearer, there was not a bill of exchange, so it could not be check either. So, if you make a document and write check on it and you say, okay, now I am making my check, that will not be acceptable. Post dated checks. This is very common. A post dated check remains a bill of exchange till the date written on the face of it. On that date, it becomes a check. So, if you give a check to someone that does not become a check on that particular day, 
it becomes a check only when the date comes. Okay. One of the effect is that the liability of criminal prosecution and section 138 would not be attracted and six months period would be recorded from the date appearing on the check. We will read more about this section 138, the check bouncing. Pay order. A pay order is not a check. It is issued by one branch of a, a bank to another branch of the same bank or under arrangement to another bank with a direction to credit the amount to the account of the party on whose demand it is issued. So, this is like a pay order is between banks either the same bank or with the other bank. Therefore, neither a pay order is equivalent to a check or it is not an issue of dishonor. Section 138 would be attracted nor the banker who is directed to pay make the pay, uh, payment can be proper complainant because he is not the payee of the instrument. So, when I say if something goes wrong with a pay order the, the bank which is issuing the person which is who is issuing he will not see the criminal liability. So, a pay order has been held to be covered by the definition of check in section 6 of the act a complaint under 138 of dishonor of pay order was held to be maintainable. Drawer and drawee. The maker of bill of exchange or check is called the drawer and the person therefore directed to pay is called the drawee. Drawee in case of need. When in the bill or in any endorsement thereon, the name of any person is given in addition to the drawee to be resorted in the case of need, such person is called drawee in the case of need. Acceptor. After the drawee of a bill has signed his assent upon the bill and if there are more parts thereof there one once so if someone accepts that uh, drawee in the need then he will become the acceptor. Acceptor for honor when a bill of exchange has been noted or postponed for non acceptance or for better security and any person accepts a uh, supra protest for the honor of the drawer or any of the endorsers such person is called acceptor of for honor and pay you can easily understand the person who is uh, pay, uh, doing payment. Section 8 holder all these things maybe this lecture is very much for those students who are going to make their career in banking and financial market okay, financial institutions. The holder of a promissory note, bill of exchange or check may be any person entitled to his own name to his position thereof to receive or recover the amount due thereon from the parties. Where the note, bill or check is lost or destroyed, it hold, its holder is the person so entitled at the time of such loss or destruction. Okay. The use of phrase entitled in his own nature is significant because of the institution of Benami. You know Benami, uh, you know the Benami where the we really do not know the real owner of that property. It is significance is thrown into full relief by the case of Sarju Prasad versus Ram Piyari Devi in 1952 AIR. The plaintiff advanced a sum of rupees 2459 under a hand note. The note was executed and uh, not in the name of the plaintiff, but in the name of X who was a name lender to a uh, Benamidar. On maturity, the plaintiff bought an action to recover the amount. The High Court of Patna rejected his claim. He was not entitled to the position of the note in his own name, therefore was not the holder. So, if you do not have your name on that particular note or uh, any instrument negotiable instrument then you cannot claim then that money becomes the benami money okay if i say i i promise that like in the check also if i don't write the name either i write to name of the institution or name of the person if i don't write the name then you cannot claim that money holder in due course holder in due course means any person who for consideration become the processor of a promissory note, bill of exchange or check if payable to the bearer. Okay. So, the phrase, the phrase in good faith and for value has been split by the section into four elements. So, you need to see when I say good faith, the holder must have taken the instrument for value, 
he must have obtained the instrument before maturity not after the maturity the instrument must be complete and regular on its face he must have taken the instruments in good faith and without notice of any defect either in the instruments or in the title of the person so this is the good faith now let's see the negotiation the transfer of an instrument by one party to another party so as to constitute the transfer is holder in negotiation a bearer instrument is transferable by simple delivery section 14 of the act which defines negotiation negotiations run like that negotiation when a promissory note bill of exchange or check is transferred to any person so as to constitute that person the holder there of the instrument is said to be negotiated so when a uh, instrument moves from one hand to another hand then we call that this the negotiation process is completed okay an instrument payable to order can be transferred by endorsement and delivery assignment and negotiation distinguished the negotiation of an instrument should be distinguished from the transfer by assignment when a person transfer his right to receive the payment of a debt that is called assignment of the debt for example the holder of a life insurance policy transfers the right to receive the payment to another person that is a assignment okay when the holder of a bill note or a check transfer the same to another in essence gives the his right to receive the payment to the instrument to the transfer thus in bold both negotiation and assignment there is a transfer of the right to receive the payment of a debt but with this similarity ends for the rights which the transfer of an instrument by negotiation acquires are substantially superior to those of an assignee assignee rights can be disputed can be challenged but uh, the the rights of the negotiator is absolute endorsement in blank section uh, endorsement is another concept endorsement in blank and in full endorsee if the endorser signs his name only the endorsement is said to be in blank if he adds a direction to pay the amount mentioned in the instrument or the order or a specified person the endorsement is said to be full if i just sign then it's a endorsement not in full but in blank the provision of this act relating to the pay shall apply with the necessary modification to the endorsee endorsement in full let's see endorsement in full when the endorser adds to his signature the name of the person whom or whose order he wants the instrument to be paid that is endorsement in full like for example a the holder of a check wants to make an endorsement in full to b he would write thus pay b to order uh, 3 a he may not add the word or order okay so when you write the name then it becomes a full check the usual for uh, form of course is to be word or order that's not important let's see a note was endorsed as follows like for example this language you can use to write a note i hereby assign this draft and all benefits of the money secured thereby to j an order maker of the note to pay him the amount thereof and all interest in respect thereof this was held to be note and agreement requiring the stamp but an ordinary endorsement of the note through is a very elaborate form noting and protest when a promissory note or bill of exchange has been dishonored by non acceptance or non payment the holder may cause such dishonor to be noted by notary public upon the instruments or upon a paper attached thereupon the party upon each now we should focus on the dishonor of check because i think that is more important because we will we can cover these issues later on but let's focus right now on dishonor of checks this is very common problem in india right now because the the idea which we started that people should respect these instruments the note or a draft or checks uh, but in last 20 30 years what we have seen that people are not respecting their checks and people are losing even faith on the checks also indian courts are full of check bouncing cases so let's understand how it happens penalties in case of dishonor of check for insufficiency of funds in the account section 
dishonor of check for insufficiency of funds in the account where any check drawn by a person or account maintained by him with a banker for payment of any amount of money any person from out of that account for the discharge in whole or in part of any debt or any other liability is returned by the bank unpaid either because the amount of the money standing to the client of that account is insufficient to the owner the check the amount is not enough in the bank or that it exceeds the amount arranged to be paid from the account by an agreement made with that bank suppose you made an agreement with your bank that no check more than 1 lakh rupees can be honored by the bank okay just to avoid any fraud or any other issues so if the check is more than 1 lakh if you are issuing you are attracting the liability under one section 138 such person shall be deemed to have committed that offence and shall without prejudice of any other provision of this act be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to 2 years or with the fine which may extend to twice the amount of the check or with both so dishonor the of the check you can see ingredients of the liability under section 138 how to define the liability under section 138 the ingredients of liability under this section have been stated in terms of following points the number 1 the check is drawn on the bank for the discharge of a legally enforceable debt or other liability so you need to understand that if someone gives you a check it that doesn't mean that he is accepting the liability you need to also establish that that person is under some legally enforceable debt okay if you ask someone okay give me ransom in check okay then that money will not that check will not be accepted so whatever check you are receiving you are receiving check either for the debt or some other liability like when i say liability means that you have sold some product to that person and now he is supposed to give you money that is the legal liability to pay or some loan that you have given him some loan and now he is paying the loan the check is returned by the bank unpaid the check is returned unpaid because the amount available in the drawn's account uh, drawer's account is insufficient for the paying the check the payee has given a notice to the drawer claiming the amount within 30 days of the receipt of the information from the bank so you have to give a 30 days notice to that person that i have received this check unpaid and i am issuing a legal notice to you that please uh, give me my money back the drawer has failed to pay within 15 days from the date of the receipt of the notice okay so after issuing your notice within 30 days the the person gets 15 days to pay the amount if he fails to pay you within 15 days then you can go to the court room if the above said ingredients are satisf satisfied then the person who has drawn the check shall be deemed to be committed an offence so even after 15 days if someone doesn't pay you the money then we will presume we will assume that he has committed this crime and the punishment is maximum 2 years imprisonment on the defaulting party with fine which may extend to twice the amount of check or with both okay so this is all about the dishonor of check but i would like to talk little bit more about the dishonor of check there are few interesting development which are happening in various high courts and supreme courts now even even the high courts and supreme court they are saying even the district courts are saying that you have to deposit 10% of the money you have to deposit the 10% of the money if you want to contest this case you know if someone has filed a case against you dishonor of check you want to dispute it that okay i didn't have any debt or any liability i just gave him check on a bona fide intention and now he is misusing this provision still you have to pay 10% uh, amount deposit 10% amount in the bank and uh, the court room second uh you need to take bail also in the court you know it's a bailable offense but you need to take bail from the court so uh, now the law has become more and more stricter and maybe in future we will see some provisions where if your check is bounced more than a reasonable number maybe you will be restricted to open a bank account in in this country 
So, in this lecture we understood the role of RBI a very comprehensive role very important role when you are going to work in a banking or financial institutions you need to understand that everything is coming and going through the RBI. Okay. So, in that sense if you understand RBI rules regulations their functions you can play an important role in your organization. Second part is uh, financial instruments the negotiable instrument act. So, various types of instruments are available for financial transactions if you understand them well their legal nature their obligations then you can take a wise decision for your company for your startup that what type of transactions you should allow in your company or in your startup. And in case if someone does not uh, recognize or honor those financial instruments what type of legal action you can take and the procedure 30 days notice you have to issue then you have to wait for 15 days and after 15 days if you do not receive your money you can go to the court and uh, make a criminal case. So, with these words I will stop here thank you very much.